Morning everybody and welcome to day six. Is it day six? Anyway, it's Tomcat Wednesday. So if you're waiting for a big video on Tomcat Wednesday, I apologise again because there's no Wi-Fi. But I did manage to uh, get a small video uploaded on flues. So hopefully you enjoy that. Anyway, welcome to part two of our staycation holiday 2021 to North Devon. I think you can tell by me walking around the house, it's absolutely chucking it down and blowing a gale. Hopefully it's going to clear up a bit because today we're going to the Big Sheep. And if you don't know what the Big Sheep is, the Big Sheep is Devon's number one attraction. It's a theme park. One of the problems being married to a farmer's daughter is she wants to stay on a working farm when we go on holiday. She wants to see the cows every day when they come in and when they go out. And she wants to go to the big sheep, which is a sheep farm with a few attractions on it. But look, can you see that? We've got a little bit of blue sky. Not a lot, just a little. This wind's getting proper up now, so hopefully it's not ruining the recording. So, uh, even Rosie has taken herself off in the field. But she's not the way because this is one of many, to be fair. Anyway, so that's what's happening today. We're going to the big sheep. Um, we're catching me. Now, the Big Sheep theme park is located in the village of Abbotsham, which is just outside Biddeford, and it's going to take us about 25 minutes to get there. So let's get on with it. So we've arrived at the Big Sheep, and it's absolutely chucking it down. So everybody's diving for cover to get away from the rain, but there is a little bit of blue sky over there. And there's nobody at the roller coaster, so as soon as it opens, we're going on the roller coaster. Hopefully. Cheers. Now, because of the rain, the roller coaster was kept closed until the rain had gone away. So, me and Will decided to chase each other on these little quad bikes, so you could win. And uh, we wished they were going this quick, because they definitely did not go around this fast. But... I think my weight got uh, in the way. And then like four little children, we decided to go on these swing boats. <laughs> oh well, let's get higher. <laughs> Where are you than us? <laughs> Come on, Paul. <laughs> They're already spinning. We then went on the teapot ride, which I think made Will a little bit sick. <laughs> that makes you feel proper sick. <laughs> Oh, geez, a Max Verstappen. I feel proper sick now. The G Force, Will's knackered. I'm not knackered. <laughs> Will feels sick. <laughs> Will's going to throw up. <laughs> Who would have thought a little kid's little teapot thing makes you feel so sick? You still sick, Will? You feel really sick. <laughs> little kid's thing and you feel so sick. Oh, he's gonna are you gonna puke? Hey? You're gonna make the video in 18. <laughs> Chris, 
and this is my faithful companion, Joe. Everybody want to say hello to Joe? Yeah. Now, Joe is a border collie, come down from Scotland with me, and he is 60 and a half years old. Yeah, he's the old boy. He wanted to retire, but you know, government legislation's changed. They have to go a few more years now. But he loves to do the dog and duck show. So, as I was saying, we have our ducks here. Now, can anybody tell me what kind of ducks these actually are? Yeah, they're runner ducks. Absolutely sure they're in here, runner ducks. They do originate from India. They cannot fly. They're flightless bucks. So they kind of flap their wings as much as they want, but they'll not take off. And of course, they're ducks. And just like any other animal we have here at the Bichie, we like to give them all names. So I'm going to introduce you to them, because they're, they're all individual little words, as we've seen. So, we have to try and separate them. There we go. So we've got Shui doing it away there. Yep. We've got Sweet and Sour. They all stick together. And then we've got Bombay there, a little, pout, a little puff there. And we've got Orange. So that's the stars of the show. One, two, three. One. So, what do you think, Joe? Yeah, same as me. I think that was a strong number four. Okay, so we're going to go for gate number four. Are you ready to do this? Let's go. Gate number four, Joe. Gate number four. Oh, excuse me, folks. You alright? Good lenses. I'm just going to chase him to the gate. You can't come to Devon and Cornwall without having a pasty. 
latte. It's all sunny. Of course. Little bun. Let's go on the next one then. Or the one at the back. Got the one at the back. So you ready for the big fast train ride one? As soon as, as soon as we're driving. See if, see if we can get it as fast as the team can. So that was our trip to the big sheep. Didn't think it was going to be any good, but it actually turned out to be quite good. So if you've got nothing to do and you're in North Devon, uh, get to the big sheep because it's well worth it. And that is the end of day six. <laughs> We've actually got nice blue sky now, just as the sun's going down. It's been a strange old day today with the weather. One minute it's glorious sunshine, next minute it's absolutely chucking it down. Anyway, that's the end of day six. Now tomorrow, Thursday, don't think we're doing much Thursday because we're just getting packed up ready for leaving because we have to leave here early on Friday morning to get over to the Isle of Wight. So, catch you soon guys. Bye right, everybody. It's Thursday and I said yesterday we weren't doing much and we're not. But I've got to show you this. My wife's in her element today because we woke up this morning and our garden is full of cows. There's some there. There's some there. So they're everywhere. So poor little Rosie, but we're going running around in the field today because it's full of cows. So we weren't going anywhere anyway, but I guess my wife will be spending the rest of the day in the garden looking at cows.
think he's a kid. I've seen these every day. She'll be fed up with them by now. But she loves them. Not many people can go on holiday and have cows in the back garden, is there? There's nothing like kicking a man when he's down. So he's got super fibre broadband, he's here. Not in our place where we're staying, and there's still no bloody signal in the middle of the village. Morning everyone! Well, it's Friday, so that means it's home time. It's absolutely blowing a gale. I'm stood here because it's the only place where hopefully we can affect the camera. All we've got to do is get the van packed up. Then we've got to uh, get over to Southampton and get over to the Isle of Wight. So as usual, let's get on with it. Now according to Google Maps it's going to take us four and a half hours but there's a lot of traffic and we are having an hour stop over and our ferry over to the Isle of Wight isn't till six o'clock so God knows what time we're going to get there. So with the lunch stop, it took us over seven hours to get to Southampton. And then we've got the hour crossing, or just over an hour crossing. And then we've got half an hour or so to get from Cowes to where we're staying near Shanklin.
drive at the place, 12 hours driving, that is our caravan there, I'll we'll have to unload the van here, we've got a massive big car park, it's all full, all this money you're paying and you can't even get a car park in the caravan, so I've got a van right on the other side of the caravan, that's all morning already. Hi everyone and welcome to day nine of our staycation holiday but now we're on the Isle of Wight so today this is a year in the waiting we are at Osborne House finally so we're at Queen Victoria's old house which she uh, acquired with Albert so we're gonna have a tour around the house to find out exactly how grand Queen Victoria's country mansion was so far looks pretty grand so to get to Osborne House we're actually doing the opposite trip we did yesterday when we came over on the ferry so again it's going to take us about 25 minutes to get there in 1843, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were looking for a seaside retreat for their growing family to escape the pressures of London and Windsor. The Osborne estate, then owned by Lady Isabella Bletchford, was recommended to them by then the Prime Minister, Sir Robert Peel. The estate was initially leased to them, but then bought in May 1845 for the grand sum of £28,000. The first phase of building was completed in 1846 with the pavilion housing the private rooms for Queen Victoria and Prince Albert and the Royal Nurseries. Prince Albert supervised the design of the formal gardens around the house in addition to the remodelling of the parkland and the pleasure grounds. Hidden in the woods at Osborne, well away from the main house, is a little alpine style chalet with its own garden and museum. Prince Albert built a Swiss cottage between 1853 and 1854 for their nine young children. So we just had the tour around the house. Hopefully you enjoy the pictures because they didn't allow me to film in there. So I took plenty of pictures. So hopefully you enjoyed Osborne House as much as we've enjoyed walking around. Such an absolutely splendid house. Now we're going to have a look around the gardens because like everything else in this house, showed. It wouldn't be a Tomcat video without looking at the plumbing. So here's a Victorian wash basin. I was quite shocked to find out that Queen Victoria actually had her own private shower. As you would expect, Queen Victoria also had her own bathtub. The only problem is, no hot and cold water taps here. I would have liked to have traipsed up the stairs with the hot water to fill it, but somebody must have. And of course, the smallest room in the house housed the throne. Also, I thought I'd throw in a bit of uh, 1960s, 1970s plumbing. Yeah, look at that lovely radiator. I only saw two radiators in the whole house. And this is one of them. Well, I didn't expect this type of table in the palace. A billiard table. Complete with its own bats. So I made a joke about the model lift being in the house. Saying she was that posh the queen. She had a lift. Well, she actually did have a lift. In 1893, Queen Victoria, with an increasing difficulty in using the stairs, prompted the installation of this hand-operated lift. This led to her suites upstairs on the first floor. So that was a bit of a shock. Queen Victoria died in this room and in this bed at 6.30pm on Tuesday the 22nd of January 1901 surrounded by her relatives. Following the funeral, her children had the plaque placed above the bed and the room was used as a family shrine.
Every time the children would visit, they would place flowers in this room, especially during the cows week. So it's just started raining, so we're on our way back now to the van because we're going to go and get something to eat. But I bought my wife a present while we're at uh, the house. A watering can in the shape of a robin. How cool is that? 18 quid. Chucking it down now, so we need to move. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to Sunday. I know what day it is. Is it the 10th day, 9th day? Anyway, it's our last day. And it's our last day on the holiday and the last day on the Isle of Wight. And the last day on this campsite. So, we don't really know what we're doing today. I know this is the swimming baths are here. It's this building here. So we're going to go in the indoor pool and we're hoping to go to Shanklin, to the beach and to play some crazy golf. If the weather improves but as you can see it's black clouds but it is warm can't ask for everything and as usual rose taking her out around the site to do her duties which she's already done i praise the lord for that so let's get on with the final day got no clue like i say what's happening so let's get on with it So we're just having a walk down to Shanklin Beach. It's going to take us about half an hour. But on our walk, it's like being at home. Lower hide. Amazing. It's felt the same way and everything. Brilliant. So let's get to the beach. So we've arrived at Shanklin. Last time I stood here, 12 months ago, an helicopter landing on the beach just there
So, we're here to do the crazy dog. Did we do that one last year? Or are we doing this one this year? That's how we're the other way around. I think we did that one last year. Anyway, we're going to get something to eat and then we're going to do the crazy golf. Either that one or that one again because it is a family tradition. Well, the Olympics here as well. Bit of a regatta going on out there. What a beautiful day as well. So now it's time for the crazy golf after we've stuffed our fat faces with sandwiches and chips. Can I retain my crown? And we're going on the dinosaurs because we went on the pirates last year, so I believe. So, see if I can win again. So we finished the golf and uh, I'm not celebrating with an ice cream because I had a bit of a paddy and I came last because I had a ginger strop and I have to apologise to everybody else playing golf because I ruined it for everybody but little Will fear with his celebration ice cream because he won. He got 60 shots. Charlotte came second, Georgia came third, but even the dog down there she beat me <laughs> and I come a massive last because I spoiled it anyway going home in disgrace now <laughs> morning everyone it's going home day so <laughs> it's absolutely piddling it down so as you can see fans all packed up ready last bag why do you always end up with more stuff going home than you keep coming with? Even though we've eaten all the food. And we're not taking any food back with us. Anyway. Yeah, whatever. So, well, all we've got now is get over to the ferry, then get over to Andy Beezer's training centre and have a look around his centre to see what I can nick from him. And then we've got the long drive home. So as usual on our videos, shall we get on with it? So I've just realised, because we got here late, I haven't even shown you where we've been staying. So, <laughs> this is just where before we're going, so let's have a quick tour of where we've stayed then. So as soon as we come in through the door, we have the kitchen. Then we had the living room. Then... We go down the corridor, first door we come to on the right was the bathroom with the first toilet. Then this is where Georgie stayed in the first bedroom. This is where we stayed. This is where Will stayed. And there was another toilet 
Oh, it wouldn't be a Tomcat video without looking at the boiler. So basically we had an ideal look-alike, but if we look down at the bottom, look at the lovely pipe work. Blow off done in, plastic pipe, and a clip in sight, and didn't even bother going back to the wall. Amazing. We could all get away with doing a crap job like that. Anyway, that was the boiler. And that was me. So, that was our caravan. So again, with the ferry crossing, it's going to take us around about two hours to get back to Southampton. The ferry company have emailed us to say there are no delays. So, hopefully we get back to the mainland in time, get over to Andy's place, and then set off for home around about two o'clock. Hopefully getting home around about eight-ish. Fingers crossed. We finish off where we actually started part one. Walking the dog again here. But this time it's the day after we got back because we got back very late yesterday. But just like to say a big thanks to Andy and his wife Kath for uh, a great evening on the Isle of Wight. And Andy, your centre looks top notch, mate. So uh, well worth the visit. So if you are looking to become a plumber or you are a gas engineer, need your reassessment, and you're in Southampton or around Southampton, get in and see Andy's business. I'll put a link down in the comments below so uh, you can have a look at his stuff. So if you've liked these videos, why don't you uh, give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. I think you know by now it's Mondays and Wednesdays. Anyway, all I've got left to say is thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.